Welcome back everyone. Today I will be talking about energy wavelength and frequency and going over how to solve these sorts of problems. All right, so we're going to go over the equations, then I'm going to go over some practice problems, then I'm going to go over the relationships between energy, frequency, and wavelength, and then I'm going to give you some extra problems to check your progress on this topic. If you're new here, my name is Leah, and on my channel you can find more science and math tutorials. Let's start talking about the equations used for these kinds of problems. So on the left here, we have that E equals to H times nu. E means energy, H means Planck's constant, which the value is given here. And finally, nu, this V looking character, is our frequency in Hertz. Okay, so going on to the right, we have our other energy equation. E is equal to H times C all over lambda. Okay, so H means the same thing as it did before, it's Planck's constant. C is going to be the speed of light, which in this video I'm going to approximate to 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And finally, we have lambda, which is going to represent the wavelength. Something to keep in mind here is that whenever you see H or C, you know that those are constant, all right? And so those are values that are already known, and you don't have to calculate them. The only things you will be calculating are either energy, frequency, or wavelength. Another thing to note is that you have two options, right? You have two equations for energy, which means that if they are talking about energy and frequency, you're going to use the equation on the left. If they talk about energy and wavelength, you're going to use the equation on the right. All right, so pay attention to what unit they are giving you numbers for. Here, we want to find the frequency of 100 joules of energy. We're talking about frequency and we're talking about energy, which means we need to use the equation energy is equal to Planck's constant times frequency. All right, so now it's about looking at this equation and seeing what we do know and what we do not know. Okay, so we know that we have the energy and we need to find the frequency. Okay, so energy is equal to 100 joules and we will set this equal to h times the frequency. So h is Planck's constant, so 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds. And this is going to be multiplied by the unknown frequency. So we'll just keep it as a variable with the letter nu. All right, we're going to divide both sides by Planck's constant. Right, I'll just put an h here for short. Right, Planck's constant will cancel out on the right side. And then we will divide 100 by Planck's constant to get the frequency. So if you do this division, you should get that frequency is going to be equal to 1.51 times 10 to the 35, which is just cycles per second. So the energy of a photon with a wavelength of 450 nanometers is... Okay, so in this case, we are dealing with energy and wavelength, which means we are going to use this equation E is equal to H times C all over lambda. Okay, so we will look at our equation and see what we know and what we do not know. What we do not know is energy. So we are going to be finding energy in this example. I'll start this problem off by plugging in the known values for H and C, those constants that we had in the beginning of the video. All right, and then we are going to figure out the wavelength. So it turns out because we have meters on the top here and we have nanometers as a given number, we either need to have both our lengths in the meters unit or both in the nanometers unit. So I'm gonna to choose to put both in meters, which means I'm going to convert 450 nanometers to meters. In order to convert like this, you're going to divide 450 by 10 to the nine. Okay, so after that division, you're going to get 4.5 times 10 to the negative seven meters. Okay, and then you will go ahead and put this value in the denominator. As usual, meters and seconds will go away and we will be left with a unit in joules. Okay, so it's really important when you do this calculation that you keep your numbers in parentheses as written here so that your calculator knows where to put those you know, exponents. After this division, you'll get 4.42 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. Determine the energy from a frequency of 10 hertz. Okay, so dealing with energy and frequency, 
we are going to use the equation E is equal to Planck's constant times nu. All right, and we will start plugging in our values. So we want to find energy. So energy is going to equal some number, which is going to be equal to Planck's constant. And then we will write our frequency, which is going to be 10 hertz. So just as a note here, 10 HD is equal to 10 cycles per second. Okay, so I'll put a little negative one because this is also equal to 10 cycles in one second. All right, so seconds will go away and we will again be left in a unit of joules. When you do this multiplication, you'll get 6.63 times 10 to the negative 33 joules. What is the wavelength of an energy of five kilojoules? In this example, we have wavelength and we have energy, which means we will use the equation E is equal to H times C all over lambda. Let us start plugging in the values of our constants. In this example, we are going to find the missing value, which is wavelength. Even before we you know, plug in our numbers, we can actually rearrange this equation to give us a nice lambda equals something equation. Okay, so rearranging to get lambda by itself on one side, we can start by multiplying by lambda on both sides, which means it goes away on the right. Okay, and then we have E times wavelength on one side is equal to H times C on the other side. Okay, if we want to get lambda on one side, we can divide both sides by E, our energy. Energy cancels out on the left, and we are left with the equation saying lambda is equal to H C all over energy. So let's start plugging in our values. So first, we have Planck's constant, then we have the speed of light, and finally we have energy on the bottom. As you might notice, our given energy is in kilojoules, and our Planck's constant unit for energy is in joules. This means that either both energy units need to be in kilojoules, or both need to be in joules. I'm going to convert 5 kilojoules to joules. You can do either one. So converting between kilojoules and joules, you're going to multiply by 1,000, which is going to mean that you have 5,000 joules. Okay, so I will put the number of joules on the bottom of this fraction. And then all I have to do is divide and multiply. In this case, joules and seconds will cancel out, leaving us with a number in meters. And that number in meters will be 3.98 times 10 to the negative 29 meters. So pause the video and try this one on your own. So what is the energy in one mole of light with a wavelength of 700 nanometer? We are dealing with energy and wavelength once more, and so we will use the equation E is equal to H times C over lambda. And in this case, we are going to find energy. So energy is going to be equal to, and I'll start plugging in the values for our constants. Now on the bottom of this fraction, we need to plug in the given wavelength. Now, as you might notice, the wavelength is given in nanometers and the speed of light is given in meters. So we need to convert meters to nanometers or nanometers to meters. So I'm gonna to choose to convert my 700 nanometers to meters. All you need to do here is divide 700 by 10 to the nine. Doing this, you will get seven times 10 to the negative seven meters. And this value will go in the denominator here. Meters and seconds will go away and we will get an energy value in joules. This is going to be 2.84 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. There is one more step for this problem. If you notice here, this problem wants the energy in one mole. Okay, and so what we're going to do is going to multiply the energy we just got by Avogadro's number. Okay, and that's going to be 6.02 times 10 to the positive 23. Okay, and we will get the energy in one mole. When you do this, you're going to get 1.71 times 10 to the positive 5 joules, which is going to be the amount of energy in one mole. Let's talk about energy wavelength and frequency relationships. Here, we want to know the trend in energy if it drops or it rises whenever frequency rises or drops, okay? And we're going to do this for energy and wavelength and also frequency and wavelength. Okay, so 
For the first one, recall the energy equation that relates energy and frequency. So as frequency increases, energy also increases. As frequency goes down, energy will also go down. Okay, and so energy and frequency are directly related. They both do the same thing at the same time. As one goes up, the other one also goes up. And the, as the other one goes down, the other will also go down. Now for energy in wavelength, recall the equation that relates energy in wavelength. And you will notice that as wavelength goes up, the denominator will get really large, right? Which means our total, meaning our energy, will go down and vice versa. So as our wavelength goes down and our denominator in that equation gets smaller, our energy is going to go up. And finally, the relationship between frequency and wavelength. So this one is going to be as wavelength increases, frequency is going to decrease, all right, and vice versa. So as wavelength decreases, frequency will increase, right? And so the relationships, the last two that we did, right, these are going to be called indirect or inverse relationships. That just means that they do opposite things at the same time. So as one goes up, the other is going to do the opposite. It's going to go down. Okay? And as one goes down, the other is going to go up. Okay, so these are all important trends that I would keep in mind for your exam or quiz as you're taking a chemistry course. Now it's time to check your progress on this topic. All right, and feel free to write your answer in the comments. So here I have given you three questions relating to the problems we just did in this video. If you're interested, I offer online tutoring and you can make a scheduled appointment with me by going to the link in the description box below. You can also find the link to my website and other resources as you study in this chemistry course. All right, guys, I will see you next time.